Welcome back to Pixlr. Uh, today we're going to be showing you how to create a shadow inside of pixlr.com slash e, their advanced edition. Uh, we're going to start off with a nice PNG image right here. Uh, I got a rhino. And um, in order to create the shadow, the first thing I'm going to do is give myself a little more canvas space. I don't want to just resize the rhino because I don't want to distort the quality of the image. Um, because when you resize images, uh, you, you run the risk of uh, pixelating them. Uh, whether you're shrinking them too much or increasing their size too much. So I'm going to go up here to um, our image up here in our menu in the ribbon and I'm going to go to canvas size and uh, let's see we've got a 600 by 337. I'm just going to, I'm just probably going to maybe, uh, let's double these, uh, let's say 1200. Um, and let's go by, oh gosh, I don't know, let's go 800 just for now. Okay, so we got a little more space to work with here with our Rhino. Now the first thing we want to do is select our Rhino. Now there's a few different ways we can do this. You can create a box around it. Um, and if I was to copy and paste that box, I just want Control V and Control C. I have a copy of the Rhino. There's lots of ways to select um, the object. Another uh, way you could do it, for example, if you have a PNG is to use your wand select. You could select the background, which selects everything except the Rhino, right click and invert your selection. So lots of different ways to make the same thing happen. Either way, we have our Rhino selected now. Um, once you get your Rhino selected, um, Control C and Control V as in victory, and it'll create a duplicate. Now, it might not look like anything happened, but over here we now have a new layer. And um, then we have the background layer. All right, our new layer is here. Um, there's uh, the background layer. Now shadows, unless Normally when we have light coming from the, per, uh, the viewer's perspective, the shadow is going to fall behind the object. But if the light is coming from uh, behind the object, the shadow will fall in front. So I'm going to show you how to do both shadows here today. Um, let's start off with the one that is behind. So your, your rhino that's behind right now, this one back here, I'm going to click on that background layer. I'm going to unlock it too um, so we can work with it a little more easily. Um, there's a couple things we can do. We can go to adjustment. We're going to go to brightness and contrast and we are going to bring the brightness all the way down. And then you also have contrast, right? So if the brightness is all the way down, you have that contrast as well. Our goal is to make that rhino go as black as possible. So we have that, that darker shadow there. So we can apply that. Um, also, um, what we can do is change the um, opacity of this layer. And now I can right click on my background layer here and I have transparency. So I guess a little bit different than opacity, it's the same concept though. And I can make that shadow go transparent. Now, um, depending on how, uh, like the light contrast that you're working with, um, you can uh, lighten that shadow or darken it. I'm going to make mine, I'll, I'll put around 50% right now. This will get us the idea. Okay. Um, now, that shadow, if it's behind it, it's going to be kind of hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to just hide my front layer for right now. My shadow now, let's say I wanted the light to be coming from the foreground on the left. Something I can do to this shadow is I can uh, free distort the shadow depending on what I want the light to do. Whoops, and I'm on the uh, image PNG right now. You see my mistake? I, w I still have the image selected. I want to be on the background. So I'm going to go up here, edit, free distort, and I can warp the shadow depending on what we want. And then I can show that front foreground layer again. I'll uh, click off to apply the distort effect. And now we have that shadow. Now you see the only issue here is, see how the feet aren't connected? We do want the feet to be connected in this case. So let's go back to our image here. And you know what I might do? I'm just gonna put a white background behind all this for right now, um, just to make things a little easier to see. Um, let's see. Where did our shapes go? Here we go, shapes. I'm just gonna big, create a big rectangle back here. Um, 
and we're just going to make this all white. Let's do that. And what I should do here first is to make a uh, new layer first. All right, let's get that background, white background. You'll be able to see the shadow a little better. I'm just going to click and drag that down. There we go. Now you can really see the shadow. So yeah, you see how the feet don't connect down here? We do want those to connect. So I'm going to go back to my free distort, edit, free distort on my shadow. And I'm going to pull that back in just a little bit. You can make micro adjustments by pulling these in. And if you have a little fragment like hanging out like we do here on the side, you could always go through there and, and clean it up with an eraser or something like that. Right? Now this front left foot looks like it's raised off the ground. So it kind of makes sense that the shadow is not attached, right? Um, if something, if the object isn't touching the ground, then the shadow won't be touching the object necessarily. Um, there's a chance that it won't. All right, so that's how we could do a background um, shadow. Now, um, when I do a shadow, I usually try and take into account for like which way is the, the light actually coming. So on this rhino, you know, it looks like the light's coming from the top because we have natural shadows underneath the rhino. So a place that, that um, this shadow might naturally want to be would be something like we could do this. We could go back up to our free transform. If the light was coming directly on top, you know, maybe we have more of like a pool of shadow underneath this this rhino. Now, if your if your uh, shadow is getting too too warped out and distorted, then you can um, just re recreate this layer by duplicating the rhino, changing it again. All right. So we have that's one way of getting the backlit shadow. Now, there's another way here. I'm going to delete that shadow off here. We'll uh, confirm the transform and we'll throw away that layer. Uh, let's create another copy of the rhino. Paste it. Now I have a rhino in the back and a rhino in the front. This time we're going to change um, again the rhino in the back. That's going to be our shadow layer. So I'll hide the one in the front and you couldn't see that it changed anything because they're directly on top of each other. So let me move that around just a little bit so you can see as I hide the one in front. Now we're working with the one in the back. I can do that same thing, brightness, contrast. Um, whoops, I'm working with the wrong layer again. Here we go. Adjustment, brightness, and contrast. We'll apply that. And then I'm going to flip this layer upside down. I'm going to go up here to edit, transform, and I'm going to flip it vertical like that. Let me show the uh, rhino now. And then I'm going to grab that that shadow here and I'm going to move it down here. All right. So now you can see how that, that shadow can be flipped. Now, again, you have to mess around with the feet a little bit. You might have to delete some things off. Um, that's no problem. We can move this up a little bit so we can play around with that idea a little bit. So you see these two feet in the back should definitely be touching. This one on the front right should be touching. So we're probably going to need to distort this image. So we'll click here on the shadow. We'll go edit, free distort. We'll pull the shadow down just a little bit. And voila, you can have something that is a little more of a shadow. Uh, the one thing that we need to do about this still, I'm going to right click on the shadow and drop the transparency until I get it to that faded color that I'm looking for. Last thing that you can do with this um, to make this look really good is we can add a uh, filter and we could do something like uh, look up a uh, Gauss, Gaussian blur. So um, if you don't know how to get there, let's see, we can go through here and here's a Gaussian blur. It's under filter, details, Gaussian blur, and I can add a certain amount of blur to it. You see how it fades that shadow out a bit? And I might still go in there and clean up the shadow a bit where it connects to the feet. But that's the general idea. That is how you can create a shadow in Pixlr. Hope you enjoy.